Hello. I thought I'd show you a little sterling engine I've been making. I first saw these on the internet a while ago. I had a look through some of the videos. I had a look to see how they were made. And then the process looked quite simple. It was a very simple basic engine. Very simple principle the way it works with just heat expansion and then cooling air, contracting, drawing the power piston up and down. So gathering a few tin cans and bits and pieces together I started on my own little uh, project. The, dis the displacer inside the centre cylinder is made out of oasis that you get in flower making and just cut it to the right size by pushing the, the tin can over the oasis to cut through it and then with a bit of rolling and f filing you give it just a little bit of clearance inside the, the actual cylinder. And this allows the outer move backwards and forwards past the power, the um, displacer piston. Sorry. Hopefully, it should have warmed up enough now to start it running. Let's uh, let's give it a go. There we go. Doesn't take long to warm up. Probably only takes about 30 seconds. It's not the fastest of engines, but it's a, a nice little runner. And just left to its own devices. It, probably run for over an hour or so on a small small little bottle of meth that I've made. I'm quite pleased with the way it runs. There's a slight noise to it, a slight ticking, I don't know if you can hear it. But it seems to run quite sweetly. As I say, it's not, not a very f fast runner. And it's a little bit wobbly, the flywheel and the little pulley on the other end are a little wo bit wobbly. The flywheel is all handmade. I'll just cut it out of a piece of wood and then file in it to the right shape. It's not quite central but it's good enough. The power piston inside the copper tube is just made out of JB Weld. All I did was cut a piece of copper tube to the right length that I wanted for the size of the piston, blanked off the bottom with a piece of cardboard and then to make the well inside the piston to allow for the, the connecting rod to go in and the connecting pin I shaped a bit of plasticine and when I put the JB Weld in I just pushed the plasticine into it and then let it set around the plasticine and then once it was all dry just take it all apart clean out the plasticine and then with a little bit of filing and cleaning up ended up with a piston that was just the right size I found this runs better with no lubricant on the, the piston because if you put a light bit of oil on it what tends to happen is it seems to seep into the JB Weld and then makes the piston sticky and after a little while when it's running it gradually gets tighter and tighter and then just stops but by leaving it dry it runs perfectly After I've made this, when I made this one, I enjoyed making this one so much that I thought I'd have a go at making another one. So I've also made a, uh, a twin cylinder, twin walking beam Stirling engine. That I'm quite pleased with as well. On top of the crankshaft, I've placed a couple of uh, ball bearings attached with some more JB Weld and welding wire to act as counterbalances for the weight of the displacer because with these you need to make sure that the, the engine turns over nice and smooth, nice and freely with no heat in it. And the best way to make sure that it does turn over nice and smooth and freely is to take the power piston out and then just turn the engine over and see how long it spins for by hand. Just give it a little push and see how it rotates. I'll pull the heat out and see how long it runs for afterwards. It doesn't take long for it to start slowing down. I don't know if you can hear the click, click, click 
I think that's where the conrod joins the pin. I think there's a little bit of play in there, just a little bit too much. Nearly stopped. That's it. Now what I'll do is if I pull the, the piston out, I'll show you that. I don't know how clearly you can see that, but that's the piston I made out of JB Weld. And down inside. It may be fuzzy, I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from here. But that's where the conrod joins. You turn the engine over. It's a little bit a little bit tighter than I would like, but it turns quite freely. Pop that back in. Heat back in. Give it a couple of seconds and then it will fire up again. As I say, it's such an easy engine to make. It's only a matter of sourcing the tin cans and the bits of tube. The only thing I really had to pay for when making this was the tubes of JB Weld. Everything else is just bits I had laying around at home and at work. And then just the time of assembling it all. There it goes. I'll just move the camera so you can see over the top. I'll just give you a bit, a bit of light to see inside. got a little bit of water just sitting on top of it to help with the cooling as well as the water around the sides. I could have done with a larger tin around the top really just to allow for more water but as I say it does run quite nicely for an hour or so so I'm not really worried about the size of the tin. Anyway that's my little Sterling engine. Hope you like it and I'll make another video to show you the, uh, the twin cylinder twin walking beam one when I can. Thank you. And goodbye.